but we're not going out for a walk in the countryside today. This is the first of a couple of videos that I thought I'd do. Uh, I'm going to call it Behind the Scenes. Uh, over the last few months or so, I've had a, a few questions from viewers, mainly about the type of equipment that I use. So I thought I'd uh, spend a few minutes just explaining some of the uh, reasons why I use the equipment, some of the issues that I've had, what's gone well and what hasn't gone well over the few months. So hopefully you might find it interesting. If you were expecting a walk, I'm sorry, but don't worry, there'll be one being published this Friday. So let me kick on. Just to give you a little bit of background, uh, I'm no professional when it comes to filmmaking or presenting. I've got no background in it at all. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, I started up, what, 14, 15 months ago. Uh, really, the idea was just to make some short videos out in the countryside, me and my dog, I sort of come walk with me, uh, really to show the viewer some ideas of areas to go for a walk. So on that uh, objective, uh, I was really looking for equipment that was light and easy to use. So for the first 20 videos or so, I started off with this little baby here. It's called uh, an Acaso V50 and I loved it. You can still buy them, I think they're about £120 off Amazon. Obviously it's a, as you can see, it's a, a very small action camera. It produces excellent pictures and the sound quality off the internal microphone is, is great. There is a but and you'll find me using the word but a few times in this video. The image stabilisation isn't that great and obviously if I'm out in the countryside and I'm walking about I want the picture to be fairly, fairly solid. So I used a gimbal along with it and here it is. It's a IS Steady Pro 2. I think you can still get them for about £90 on Amazon. So let me put the Acaso onto the gimbal. And there it is in position. And for those of you that don't know what a gimbal is, basically it's a bit of equipment that, as you can see, I'm moving my arms all over the place, but the camera stays nice and solid, so you get a nice smooth footage all the time. And that's the setup that I used, as I said, for the first 20 videos. But the problem I had was with wind noise. Uh, I had, you probably watched plenty of YouTube videos where the, the picture quality is great, but if there's ever any wind noise in the background, it can really spoil your enjoyment. You can see I've got a little fluffy thing on top of the microphone. I think they call them wind cheaters. And that's fine for wind speeds up to 10 or 12 miles an hour. Uh, for slightly windier conditions, I used to put a little foam cover around it with uh, rubber bands. It didn't look great, but it worked. And that was okay for slightly windier conditions. But any time there was a, a real heavy wind, then even if I tried to film behind uh, a tree or a building, I was still getting wind noise. So I had to upgrade to a, a GoPro 7 uh, so that I could use an external microphone. You can use an external microphone on the Acaso, but, and I think I'm correcting thing, the only microphone you can use is the Acaso microphone. And I found that it wasn't very good. It had a very tinny sound. So I made the decision to upgrade to a GoPro 7 Black, which is here. Picture quality, excellent. Internal microphone, excellent. Uh, one of the game changers for me with this camera was that the internal image stabilization was really good. So much so that 
I didn't need to use the gimbal, provided I didn't get a bit too up and downy with my arms, and that makes life a little bit easier. But the great thing about this is that I was able to use a decent external microphone. But nothing in life is ever easy. You'd think all I needed to do was to get the microphone and, and plug it in, but no. With the GoPro, you have to get a separate uh, adapter. And by having the adapter, which costs an extra 50 quid, uh, you need to house it otherwise the adapter will just be dangling about. So, uh, this is the little house that the GoPro goes into. I say it nicely fits in there with a little door on the back. And then this is the uh, microphone adapter that goes in the bottom of the housing. I'll just plug it in there. The other good thing about having the GoPro inside this housing is that I can uh, put a little, uh, what would you describe this, cover I suppose, to protect the screen when I'm not uh, using it. Now the microphone is just here. Uh, I forget what this is called. A Fanta Reel. Only costs 20 quid and it's excellent. I was a bit worried it's half the cost of a Rode microphone but uh, this really was a game changer because I can use this in incredibly windy conditions. In fact I was filming um, about a month ago high up on a ridge and it was blowing a gale and I was even apologizing to the viewers on screen I'm sorry uh, if this wind noise is too bad and spoiling the audio. But when I got back home, doing the editing, you couldn't hear any wind at all. In fact, it, quite, it looked quite odd. You, you had the background with the, the trees waving from, from side to side. So, obviously it's very good when I've got the uh, camera pointing at me. This particular microphone is... It's not too bad when I've got it pointing away. Um, it's slightly uh, less loud, but yeah, it's acceptable. So this literally clips on top of a hot shoe like this, like that, and then just plugs in to the adapter. You'll notice that I've got a, a slightly uh, raised um, hot shoe to make sure that the dead cat, which is what this fluffy thing's called, doesn't get in the way of the screen. Now I had to attach it to something, so I use this, uh, it's called a smart tree, it literally just screws on underneath, and that's how I will hold the camera, like that most of the time. Um, it can be used as a selfie stick, hopefully, so it goes up, Oop, it will stay up on us, uh, and also uh, I can use a little tripod stand which just screws on underneath like that. And I'll use this for the walking scenes where you see me and Logan walking towards the camera and away. Uh, it literally just pops on the ground like that, nice and steady. I will now mention lighting because these are great, these little action cameras for what they do. They're really designed for action, you know, mount on a top of a helmet of a cyclist, that sort of thing. What they're not good at is filming well in low light conditions. And that's understandable really because, um, you know, when you look at the, the size of the lens, it is quite tiny. So to get around that, around that problem, I do use artificial lighting. So let me show you how I have the setup for that. And there we go. So what I've done there, I've got this extra mount at the bottom there. The camera goes on one side and this little light goes on the other. This light's not particularly expensive. I think it was about £15 or so from Amazon. And uh, 
the battery you charge up using a USB off your computer. And if I can just get the switch on, there we go. And there are different uh, different settings. I've actually got a, a piece of brown plastic in there just to uh, make it a little bit of a softer light, more like a, a sunshine, I suppose. And I'll use this fairly regularly because um, even on very, very sunny days, if I'm sort of going like that and the sun is there and the blue sky behind me, and if perhaps there's some trees in front, my face will be in a shadow uh, and it looks odd. So just by having this, it just lights up the face a little bit um, and makes it a, a little bit um, easier for the viewer to see what's going on. Now, what else do I carry around in my bag? I mentioned the bag. When I first started off, I used to carry everything in a, a rucksack on my back, but I used to find that a real pain in the neck. Every time I wanted to get something, I had to take the backpack off and unzip and get it out and then you know, vice versa. With the bag, or I suppose you call it a satchel, it made life a lot easier as I was going along. If I saw some wildlife, I could grab the camera straight away and click away. Speaking of cameras, I shall show you the camera that I use. This is a, what a Canon SX 530HS. Uh, I think they're about 185 pounds on Amazon now. Again, I love this camera. And I'll use this for still photographs that I'll use in the video. I'll also use it for the zoom. It has a really good zoom. I think it's something like 200 times, which is excellent if I'm you know, coming across some wildlife. I might use the video sometimes, uh, mainly on the, on the zoom, to be honest. Um, the problem there is that there's no external microphone with this. So, okay, I've got the um, wind uh, cheater on the outside there but uh, if there is a, a lot of wind then I'll use the footage but and then overdub it uh, with some separate audio. It also only films in 1080p. I do all my videos in 4k. Though I'll cover all that in another video but uh, yeah it's a nice bit of kit. What else have I got in the bag? Uh, I ought to mention tripods. Um, you'll notice in the videos that I often do the introduction scene and the end scene in a slightly different format. Rather than having a sort of handheld camera, it'll normally be me and Logan sitting down on a bench or a bank a little bit further away from, from the camera. Those situations when I'll use a, a, a tripod. Now, if I'm not too far from the car, then I'll use you know, my main big heavy tripod, which is nice and steady. But I don't want to be carrying that out with me on a walk. So most of the time, I'll use this little tripod here. It's called a Photo Pro. As you can see, it's tiny. It, it, it folds up nicely. I think it's, well, it's less than a foot, maybe 11 inches, and it's incredibly light. The downside of it, being so light as it is quite delicate. Um, the legs are very easy to break. As I found out to my cost, this is my second one. But I'm very careful with it. Um, and uh, it does what I need to do, uh, have something nice and light that I can carry with me. Uh, now, I should mention, this. Um, it's a little tripod as you can see but it's, um, I forget what these are called, but they're quite flexible and from time to time you know, I might want to use it for a walking scene and rather than using the little mini tripod um, I might use this. You can attach it to a, a branch of a tree or the top of a fence and then mount the camera on that. I don't use it that often, maybe once every three videos or so. Now, I've mentioned microphones with the, the GoPro. 
Um, one of the other issues that I had uh, when I was filming using the tripod, being just that little bit further away from the microphone, sometimes a metre, a metre and a half, the sound wasn't so good. And I could get round that by just raising my voice. But nowadays I tend to use a second microphone. This is a Rode microphone. I think it costs 40 pounds. Um, and it's already set up uh, with a long extension lead and I can plug it into the camera. It saves me having to take the other microphone off the GoPro. So it might seem odd having two microphones but it just makes life easy on the road. Some other little snippets that I keep in my bag. Oh dear, now don't laugh about this. The, neither the GoPro or the Acaso has a front facing screen so I can never see myself, which is probably a good thing. But from time to time, it does come in useful if you can just check to see what the viewer is seeing. Um, so I carry with me a little vanity mirror and from time to time I'll just double check, make sure there's not a dead insect or something on my face. The other time I'll use it is just to make sure there are no shadows in the picture. One of the mistakes that I made often early on when I was making my videos, I'd be going along with the camera like that, the sun would be behind the camera and the shadow of the camera and the microphone and the dead cat was just covering my face. I never thought it looked very professional. You do get some YouTubers out there that don't seem to mind. I was watching a, a well-known YouTuber the other day. Um, he was up on um, a ridge somewhere going along, you know, filming away, and all you could see was the, the shadow uh, in, in his face. But I don't know, it's a way of getting around it, so that's why I carry that. Uh, <laughs> When you get to my age, you need one of these, a little uh, magnifying glass, just in case you have to read anything that's on the screen. Oh, I mustn't forget this, Logan's little rug, very light and very compact. <laughs> Whippets don't have a lot of meat on them uh, and they're quite bony animals. I mean, you can see there, he's enjoying his bed. It's nice and soft and comfortable. But asking a whippet to sit or go flat on a hard surface, say a log, for example, well, I don't think it's comfortable for them. So that's why I carry a little rug for him. Makes his life a little bit easier. I think we're nearly there. Speaking of Logan, I ought to show you Logan Cam. Uh, yeah, this was one of those things that I bought and it seemed like a good idea at the time. There's a lot of hassle attached to it because as you can see, obviously it sits on top of them. If I'm going to use it, I've got to take the GoPro out of the existing mount and then take the microphone off, put the GoPro in this mount and then attach this to Logan. I think there's something like four straps. And then when I finish filming, I've got to take it all off. Um, for the sake of 25 seconds worth of footage, it's a lot of hassle, so uh, it's probably something that I'm not likely to use again. Also, it's not a bit of equipment that I really keep on Logan all the time. Uh, he's quite thin-skinned and these straps have to be attached quite tightly and I'd be worried that they might rub on him, but fortunately it didn't cost too much. Well, I think I'll wrap up the video there. Hopefully you'll have found that interesting. As I said right at the beginning, I'm no expert and I'm still learning as I go along and uh, I expect things will change as I do more and more videos. Um, I'll do another video uh, in a few weeks time just to uh, give you an idea of how I go about doing the editing and some of the processes that are involved in actually doing the filming and some of the research where I get it from, that sort of thing. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Are you going to say goodbye? I've got a bone here, this usually will wake him up.
That's a typical whippet for you. <laughs> so until we meet again, say thanks for watching and cheerio.